How's it going out there, everybody? So today I've actually got a video for our beekeepers out there. So keeping track of our hives can be a bit of a task. And I've actually found a couple of different apps that actually helps you do your inspections, helps you track your queens, helps you do all of that. So stay tuned and we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, so the two apps I actually was able to find was a app called Hive Bloom and an app called B Plus. So these apps right here are actually dedicated to doing things like inspections and keeping track of your hives. Um, it really kind of ditches the whole pen and paper sort of method. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can end up doing a, a printed out PDF of all of your uh, all of your inspections and things of that nature. Um, but uh, let's take a look at these two different apps and see how they sort of compare and contrast uh, between each other. And uh, at the end of this video, I'll let you know which one I'm gonna be using and which one I'm probably gonna end up continuing with. Um, both of these apps right here, they do come at different price points. Um, I think uh, Hive Bloom is actually a subscription service, uh, which is about $17.99 a year, uh, which is actually not bad, uh, considering, you know, uh, at, you know, tallying that into a monthly charge. Um, and uh, B Plus uh, is actually $4.99, and it's a one-time purchase. Uh, and that's actually sort of the one um, that doesn't have, like, a subscription service or anything like that. You pay for the app, you get it. You're good to go. Um, now let's take a look at Hive Bloom here. So in Hive Bloom, the, the second that you open it up, uh, you're going to be meted with your apiaries. So if you have different apiaries uh, at different locations, you can actually log all of them here. Um, and you can even go down here, click on the button to add an apiary. Uh, you can also upload your images and things of that nature, or actually put an image with that apiary and uh, even put in the name and select the location. Um, we'll discard those changes. And going into my apiary here, as far as, uh, as, far as what I'm gonna be doing in April, uh, you can actually go through and you can add in your hives. So I've got hives one, two, and three. Uh, and the good thing is, is whenever you go down here to click on the hive to add a new hive, you can give that hive the name and we'll just kind of walk through this here a little bit so I can show you a little bit of the different features. Uh, so we'll just go through here and we'll just call this hive right here test hive. Okay. And then you can select uh, what kind of breed these bees are, uh, whether they're Carnolians, uh, you know, Italians, Russians, whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll click on Carnolian here since that's what I've actually got coming. And then you actually get to select the different hive tops. So whether it's a Langstroth, whether it's, you know, a, a fresh nuke or something along that lines, uh, top bar hives. So they've kind of got a little bit of everything in here. Now, this right here is what I kind of find a, you know, pretty neat about this entire app is you can actually go through and you can design your hive. So for the Langstroth hive, it is a vertical hive. So we'll go in here and they have a couple of different presets. Uh, they have the deep box, a medium box, uh, mouse guard, queen excluder, and then you can actually choose a custom. Now I've gotten here just a, a super as well as a, a hive feeder right now, but you can actually go in here and add components as well. So like if you wanted to do say like a queen excluder, whoops. you can actually go through and add that in. Now, the other thing is you can select different colors. So, I mean, normally queen excluders are, are either white or gray. So, I mean, depending on, you know, I'm sure they probably make different color queen excluders out there, but we'll just go with a simple gray. So the other thing that you can do here is you can also increase the size of the, of the box that you're actually trying to make. So we'll drop that down just a little bit smaller and we'll click create. So here you have your queen excluder, and then you can go back, and it actually shows up right here. 
Now to move this around, you'll see these three little dots right here, and you can actually move this up and down the hive. So if you, you know, if you're putting a queen excluder on top, I've heard of a lot of different beekeepers putting them on the bottoms, especially if it's a fresh, uh, if it's a, a package of bees or something like that to kind of keep the queen from flying away. Um, and then of course, like if you needed to add like a super or if you needed to feed these bees, uh, you can do that as well. Now going into the actual hive itself, uh, whenever you click on the hive, you, you're actually met with a couple of different, different tabs right down through here. Your inspections, you can actually go through and add the first inspection for this hive, which if you do that, uh, you'll actually pull up the inspection uh, sheet template. And you can go in here and actually put in their temperament, whether they were gentle, aggressive, or if they were active. Um, you can put in even, they even have a little meter here to kind of put in like hive strength and it changes depending upon what percentage. Um, and the other thing here is you can also click to where you, you know, say like you spotted the queen, how she's doing. Uh, and you can also come in here and even put in uh, whether you saw like spotty brood um, or if it was compact brood, normal. Uh, and then you can also go through here and check while well, there were egg larva, were they capped, uh, things like that. The other thing that they monitor for in here is diseases. So if you click on the disease, the uh, diseases tab and you go to uh, your select bar, you can put in varroa mites, um, chalk brood, stone brood, um, a couple of different uh, things like things like that there. Uh, the pests tab, when you go through here and you select this, you can actually go through, and this is where like your small hive beetle, pests, mice, ants, whether that, you know, any, any sort of that activity uh, was actually present in the hive at that point. So the other thing is you can also go in here and put if you spotted queen cells. Now it doesn't really give you anything as far as like if these queen cells were like say supersedural or anything along those lines. It's just a matter of if you spotted them or not. You can also log your weather. Uh, so you can go in here and put in 70 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll log that weather right there. Uh, and hive weight. So you can also, you know, log the weight of the hive as well. And then also here, you can go in, you can put in additional notes, uh, and it's even got a microphone over here to where you can actually uh, speak the text for the, uh, for the notes here. Um, also, it gives you the option to go through and add in any sort of images uh, that you took of that hive, and then you can click Add the Inspection. And so it brings this inspection up right here, and you can go in here and even view like any kind of comments, or anything like that. You can even edit the inspection and view the entire inspection as well. So it's actually kind of kind of really simplistic, and I actually really like that about Hive Bloom and how they've uh, how they've kind of made this you know very sort of point and click and very uh, very user friendly. Now going back here to the second tab, you do have tasks, so you can go in through here and you can add in tasks, whether that's feeding the hive. Um, or anything like that, you can create a custom task, uh, and you can even add in a due date as far as like when that would be. So if you clicked on the add due date, it will pull up uh, a little calendar here, and you can go through and you can add in the date there. Now going back, you can also record treatments. So like say like you're counting for you know you're doing like your varroa mite count, um, you can actually uh, Put in the varroa mite count here and click submit and this little varroa mite up here will turn red or yellow depending upon how many mites you actually uh, counted the other thing in here is that you can also say like you do have a high varroa mite count you can also go in here and treat and whenever you click the treatment you can go in here and you can add in the name they do have a couple of uh, preset um, some of the more common uh, mite treatments out there uh, and then you can add in the notes here and then you can just click add treatment to, to add that treatment to the uh, to that hive health list right here and it'll show up actually right down here underneath the treatments uh, area 
Now, the queen going in here to the queen, um, the queen, you can actually even go in here and you can name your queen. Uh, you can also log like when she was born uh, and also, you know, what breed she is, whether she's marked, whether she's unmarked. If you click marked, uh, it will actually go in here and you can select the color that she's marked as. Uh, you can also, you know, choose whether her wings are clipped or whether this hive is actually queenless. And if it's queenless, uh, then all of that data disappears and everything else. Uh, now, the other thing is this little icon up here. You can actually go through and actually take a picture of the queen. That way you know next time that you get into that hive um, that you're going to be able to spot the queen. You can take a quick look at her and be like, oh, okay, this queen has got a, you know, a red marking on her. The other thing is harvesting. So this is, you know, this is sort of the thing that we all, you know, kind of dream for is the day that we get to harvest our honey. Um, now, it also logs um, wax if you've um, harvested any sort of wax or anything like that from your bees as well. Uh, so let's go in here and you can actually pull this up and you'll, your wax and honey is sort of separated off into these two, these two sides here. So to actually add in a harvest, uh, you click in on the little plus sign down here. And here you can go in, you can add in how many pounds of, of honey you harvested. So say you harvested 30 pounds of honey and say like, you know, I don't know, two pounds of wax. It's quite a bit. Um, and then uh, you can also go in here and add in notes as well as an image. And then you can add your harvest. So and then it tallies up exactly how much honey that hive has produced. Uh, depending upon you know how many harvests you have in here and it adds all of that up into these into these top spaces up here and then going back you can also log feeding so to actually log a feed you go into the uh, feed hive and then click on the little plus sign down there and it actually it comes with the presets of like sugar water or pollen and uh, also gives you you know the quantity so, you know, one quart and two patties. Uh, and then you can actually uh, go in here and click the add feed. Oh, got to enter in the name here. So let's do sugar water. And click add. Oh, it's going to make me put a, so we'll say like one quarter sugar water. And then click add feed. And then here it'll pop, it'll populate this up right here. And then the other little thing that I actually really like about this app is the notification to notify you when that hive needs inspecting next. So depending on, you know, I know every beekeeper is a little bit different. They, you know, some expect them, you know, once a week, some inspect them every five days. They keep a really strict schedule with that. Uh, so you can actually go in here and uh, it will actually notify you uh, when to inspect that that hive again next. So that's a little bit about um, you know how to set up a hive and stuff like that within Hive Bloom. Um, it does give you a little bit of demographic information here as far as like where this where the apiary is located, uh, you know what the weather is like that day. Uh, you can also uh, view tasks. You can add in tasks as it as it you know sort of comes about. Uh, so like for here, um, I've got uh, you know the first task is you know checking the queen, and actually installing the package for that day. So I've actually got those days already set in here, and it will also go through and remind you of tasks. Uh, the other thing is with. Uh, uh, you can also go up here and you can view like the gallery. You can even share the information uh, from, uh, let's say, like an inspection or a certain hive uh, with somebody as well that has the app. Um, and you can also keep track and log your equipment as well. And this is this is something that I found that was that was really really useful. Uh, so it actually logs like how you can actually log like how many deep boxes you have, how many supers, excluders. 
um, you know, you more or less go down here and just hit the little add button and you can actually put in the description of what it is that you're wanting to log and then put in your quantity. You can even add an image and you can create that. So that's a little bit about Hive Bloom and what they, you know, kind of have to offer. I actually really enjoy the simplicity of this app. Um, and I actually really like the whole customization of the hives and being able to say like add a feeder and add in a, uh, you know, add in certain components uh, to the to a certain hive. So like right here, um, whenever I get my uh, bees, I'm actually going to have them set up for one deep box. And I'm going to actually going to try a queen excluder at the bottom, just to kind of, you know, keep them from absconding or anything along those lines. Uh, and also uh, putting in that hot feeder up there at the top. So that's a little bit about uh, the hot bloom. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at B plus and let's see exactly what it is that B plus is about. Okay. So let's take a little look at B plus here and let's sort of dive into this application. Um, one thing that I really, really like about B plus is how effective it is at tracking. Um, everything from down to your equipment to the highs and apiaries. Um, and actually like whenever I first got on it, it was a little bit daunting because I was, you know, trying to figure out everything and stuff like that. But within an hour I was navigating around the app pretty, pretty easily. Um, they have everything laid out very, it, it's, it's super simplistic. Um, not as simplistic as what Hive Bloom is, but, uh, they're very, they're very similar in that aspect. Uh, so with B plus here, um, so B plus, uh, is actually a one-time purchase. It's $4.99. Um, and once you get the app, you've got the app. Now let's dive into the apiaries here. And one thing that I actually really liked about how they kind of introduced everything was they actually had these little tabs right here, uh, that would pop up anytime you clicked into something. And so it would give you a brief description as far as like what it is that you were in, uh, and how to actually kind of work that, that section of the application. So, um, but let's kind of take a look at the apiary that I've got set up here. Um, so let's dive into our hives. And I actually only have one hive put in here right now. So you can also go through and you can edit your apiaries list. You can also sort them. Uh, you can even close out this sidebar to completely close it out. Uh, but you can also add in an apiary right down here. Now with the hives that are actually in this apiary, they will show up along this line. Uh, you can also go through and even edit the list and you know, delete a hive if you need to. You can also add in a hive as well. Um, and so whenever you click on like add hive here, you can go through and you can add a photo of it. Um, you can also go through and we'll just name this one just like we did test hive. Uh, the other thing that I actually really like about this is they have QR code uh, printouts. So say like, you know, you're out in your apiary and you're trying to locate, you know, say if you're, if you're a little bit more of a, of a commercial beekeeper and you're out in your apiary and you're trying to locate, you know, which hive you're, you're sort of at, you can actually scan uh, the QR code because they actually have uh, printable QR codes that you can just staple to the sides of your hives. And from here, it will automatically bring you into that, uh, into that app and pull up that hive. So that actually, um, I would imagine for a commercial beekeeper, this right here would be super, super helpful. Uh, you can also go through and put in the hive style. So we can go in here and we can say that's Langstroth. And from here, you can even add in components. And then you can put it, and then one thing that I actually really like about this is it gives you the total equipment cost of that hive. So whatever you're putting on that hive, you're, you're seeing like, okay, this hive, you know, cost me, you know, 200 and some odd dollars, um, just to, you know, have it, have it sitting there. Just, that's just tied up in the equipment. But from here you can go through and you can add in, uh, all of your hive components here. 
Uh, and it also gives you uh, numbers as far as like how many you have versus uh, what all is actually being uh, used. So say like we go in here and so I know that I had a total of six and I've got five. Uh, so I know that that one of those D boxes is tied up in in a hive right now. So I I, I found that super 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 helpful. Um, the other thing is you can go through here and you can add in how many supers you're, you've added to that uh, to that hive. Uh, you can also even come in here and add in queen history, and you know you can even name the queen and you can say that you know if you're into like queen rearing or anything like that you can say that she's the daughter of whatever other queen um and when she was born and you know if if you have to you know go ahead and take her out then you can actually put when when that queen had ended um and you can also mark the, the uh, color as well as the hive temperament once you introduce that queen into that into that hive just kind of see how temperaments change the other good thing is you can add in notes to the Hive Editor uh, if you need to log anything or you know anything along those lines. Uh, you can also click transfer if you need to transfer that Hive to say like a different apiary. Um, and also you can you know merge uh, uh, merge that Hive as well. Uh, you know say like if you want to merge another Hive. Uh, or anything like that, and you can also duplicate. So duplicating this of. So the other thing with, uh, as far as like inspections and keeping track uh, of your hive and what that is sort of looking like, uh, when you go, when I, actually whenever you pull up your uh, your apiary, You'll have this little inspections tab right here and you can actually go in here and you can even edit the list uh, you can also uh, do it by date range if there's a specific date that you were looking for um, also you can go in through here and you can add your uh, your inspection so like for here uh, it brings up a new inspection right here and all you gotta do is just click on edit and you can also go through here and add in photos of that inspection if you need the other thing is having like a, a just like a quick, quick inspection. Uh, so it's gonna anytime you click this tab up here, it's actually gonna get rid of a lot of the stuff down in here, and it's just a, a quick just take a peek and see see how everybody's doing. Um, so you can also log the weather, what the weather was like that day. Um, the other thing is uh, whenever you click on that quick inspection, it's gonna bring up problems and diseases, your mite count, any treatments feed info and notes and that's pretty much all it's going to give you now if you go into let like a more detailed inspection uh, it actually brings back a couple of different options here so you can actually log in if you saw the queen if she's laying eggs if there's larva present and if there's capped brood the other thing is the laying patterns so just like with hive bloom uh, you can also go through here and add it in uh, log if, they, if it was patchy, if it was poor, uh, and kind of log that condition. So also colony condition. Uh, this right here I would imagine is a little bit similar to, uh, to sort of like the percentage in, uh, in hive bloom set up on, on their inspections. Um, but uh, you can actually uh, log in your colony condition here. Uh, as well as activity if there was a lot of activity if there was a lot of activity if they were out foraging if it was sort of average or if it was low and also their temperament you know were they calm were they aggressive whenever you got into the hive um, the other thing here and this is what I actually really like about it is you can log if there is any swarm cells present supersedural or any sort of emergency cells so uh, that's actually one thing that I actually really, really like about uh, um, B plus is that you can actually log what types of queen cells you saw whenever you do that inspection. Uh, the other thing is how many frames. So when we talk about frames, I'm talking about you know how many frames of honey did they have? 
Uh, how many full frames of brew did you see? You know, was there any open comb frames? Uh, any foundation uh, frames that were still left. And you can actually log that and actually watch as they build out that hive. You can also log their weight uh, and any sort of actions or anything like that. Um, you know, whether you added a super or whether you had to remove one. Uh, and then it, it sort of drops on down here to, uh, uh, to the problems and diseases. And one thing I actually really like, and this is, you know, something I, I, I feel like, you know, especially for me, it'll help me a lot since I'm a new beekeeper. Uh, but, you know, for problems and diseases, if you click on this little, these little bars over here, it actually brings up the different, uh, the different types of diseases and things of that nature. And it gives you sort of like a signs and symptoms to kind of watch out for. So like with Varroa. You know, you'll see red and brown mites visible on bees and brood, patchy brood patterns, deformed wings, sick bees crawling near the hive entrance, and signs of multiple or different diseases. Uh, but it sort of gives you, you know, sort of that thing to watch out for. So it's like, if you see something that just does not quite look right, click on your problems and diseases and see if any of those are falling sort of underneath that. If you can't remember like, oh, this is, I know that this is something, but I can't remember what it's tied to. Uh, so that's, that's actually a really good, helpful thing. And I'm actually really glad that they included that. Uh, and also, you know, scrolling on down, we go into the treatments, feed info, and then the notes. And then once you get done with that, with that inspection, you can click save. And then from here, it logs all of the, uh, it actually has these little tabs right here, but it also gives you, uh, you know, how many frames of honey, brood, comb, um, and how many empty frames that, you know, that there was in that hive. So you can actually watch them progress um, just from having, the, having this quick look at your inspections. So going back here, Let's close out of this. The other thing that I actually really enjoyed about B plus is the finances. So uh, they actually have a finances tab in here. And when you click on like equipment or anything like that, which I've actually got my equipment logged here, uh, as far as like how much everything costs me to sort of get started and so it gives me an out over here but also as i start to sell honey and stuff like that it's going to give me an in and then it'll sort of you know we'll kind of break even as we go on down through here and as honey sales you know sort of increase uh the other thing that they have in here is uh swarms so which i i plan to try to capture a few swarms next year i don't quite have the equipment for it yet um but that is something that i am uh, going to be working on for next year. So here you can actually log swarm trap locations. And so if you have, if you've like, you know, set up a trap on your property or, you know, you've talked with a neighbor and, you know, you, you know, they're going to let you set up a trap there. Uh, you can actually, uh, add in traps. So it's very similar to how the hob inspection system sort of works. But from here, you can actually go in and you can add in uh, that swarm trap. And it even gives you the QR code to where like if you were out and you needed to, you know, pull up that swarm trap real quick, you can have those QR codes printed out and ready to go just by using the camera on your phone. So from here, uh, you can actually go through and you can add in the different components. Um, from, uh, you know, once you have your inventory and stuff like that logged, uh, you can actually go through here and add in those hive components and stuff like that. Uh, put in, you know, uh, any sort of notes. And the other great thing is you can even pull up the longitude and latitude of far, as far as like where, uh, where this swarm is located at. So, um, the, uh, in their, their mapping system has a, a, a way better, uh, course as far as like narrowing things down you can even set forage ranges and you can also even display your apiaries as well up here too and then you can also transfer traps so if you need to move that trap to a different location uh, you can actually select a location to transfer that trap to 
and uh, and log sort of where that trap has been moved to, if that's the case. Uh, but swarm trapping on here is is much much better, um, and also um, so like if you needed to. I've actually pulled up my camera here. <laughs> uh, so say like you're out in your apiary and you need to pull up a um, a hive, you can actually hit the hit the find, and this is where you scan that, that QR code, and it will it'll pull up that hive for you. Uh, the other thing here is it it does have a notebook feature. So if you if if you're like me and you take notes and stuff like that. Um, here's a good spot for you to you know type in any sort of notes or you know add anything that you need to you know sort of keep keep as a reminder for later um and then timeline wise i haven't really dived in a whole lot to the timeline uh but this also you know sort of lists out sort of like inspections any sort of to do's or anything like that uh you know even gives you like your equipment um you can even go through here and even uh, evaluate like honey records, like how much, you know, how much honey you harvested and when. Uh, it's really sort of like a, a go-to all for all of your, all of the paperwork, so to speak, uh, that goes into that. But yeah, so this is, uh, this has kind of been a little bit of a demonstration as far as like some of the apps uh, that I was able to locate as far as helping keep track of bees, helping you, you know, help, helping you manage your hives a little bit better and, you know, helping the beekeep the beekeeping community and all, because I was, whenever I, uh, sort of got started, I was like, I, I'm a pretty techie guy. And I was trying to figure out like, how can I log all of this? And then I was like, I'll just make a spreadsheet. And then I got to researching about, uh, you know, other beekeepers that have made spreadsheets. And then I located these guys um, whenever I started searching for beekeeping apps just on the app store. Uh, and these two right here were actually the top rated. Uh, you know, one is a little bit more for like commercial. I think that's gonna kind of be your, you know, your B plus. Uh, plus if you're kind of like me and you like to be detailed with everything, B plus is really sort of, sort of that go-to. If you're a little bit more, if you want something that's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more simplistic, where you can just go through there and tap and say, okay, I logged this, 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 and that. Um, Hive Bloom has kind of got you set up on that end. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I think I'm probably gonna be going with B+. Uh, I'm still gonna be playing around with both of the apps and kind of try to see, uh, you know, sort of kind of get a feel for each, each one of them. Uh, but this has sort of been a little bit of an introduction and uh, I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed everything. And if you're if you're in the beekeeping community, drop me a comment. Drop me, you know, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, and, you know, that that's gonna help you keep track of any new videos and stuff like that that I put out. Uh, but yeah, I hope you know. I hope we can all sit down, and learn together, and you know, keep this sort of information chain kind of going. So. Uh, guys, it's been great. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you guys again on the next one.